Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to secure and authenticate a Laravel API using JWTs and specifically this JWT auth package from Timon. What are JWTs? They're essentially an encrypted encoded string that represents a JSON object and is used for authorization and validation of information coming from two different parties usually a client like a web browser and a server. For the web authentication portion of this that we're going to be using, uh, JWTs are passed in through the authorization header using the prefix bearer with a colon in order to determine that the person that's coming from this application is who they say they are. Let's get started. Uh, I have created a boilerplate Laravel 5.7 app that allows a person to sign in. It shows posts that are connected to their account and allows them to create, store, and update posts connected to their user ID using this simple format. Now this is good for a web app where your Laravel installation is hosted on the same place that your views are. Let's say we wanna use the functionality of these posts on something like a mobile app or a single page view application hosted on a completely different website. We wanna be able to communicate between those clients and this API. We want someone to be able to log in and see the posts that are connected to their account. Uh, by default, we can install the Laravel Passport, but I feel like in this case, it's a bit much. Uh, the JWT auth package, in my opinion, is slimmer. It's faster to get set up. Uh, when we want authentication just from an email address and a password, this provides the same level of security with a much easier barrier for entry. So let's get started. Now, if we go into the source code for this app that I have set up now, and we go to our routes web file, you can see I have the posts routes wrapped underneath our auth middleware, which is currently running on the web driver uh, using session tokens. We wanna to be able to authenticate somebody without session tokens. We wanna be able to authenticate them with a JWT. If we go back to our API file, I have a single API route set up right now called posts. And if we open up Postman, we can see that this route returns back all of the posts in the database currently. There is no way to just get back the posts that are associated with a person who is logged in. We could modify this to get posts that are associated with a particular user. If we wanted to have a public API that would allow anybody to view anybody's posts, but for something like a social media site or a note-taking application, we don't want that to be the case. You know, we don't want to view anybody's notes that are out there. So this is where the authentication that we need comes into play. We need to be able to determine who is it that is coming from this client and we need to get their information and return it back to them. So let's get started by installing the JWT auth package by requiring it in Composer. And I'm specifying the version name here because as of the date of this video, uh, there are two versions. One is stable at 5.3, but Timon is releasing the newest version, 1.0, fairly soon. It's in release candidates right now. So this is the version that we're going to be using. And we'll let that install. All right, once that's installed, the package has been discovered successfully because I am on Laravel version 5.7. If you are using Laravel 5.4 or below, you'll have to manually add in the service provider into the uh, service providers array. You can view the service provider that you need to add by going to the documentation for this package that I've linked in the video description below. All right, now that our package has been installed and discovered, we can move on to publishing the config file for it using artisan's vendor publish command. Uh, we want number eight, and it copies over the config file to config slash jwt.php. And if we open that up, we'll see that we have a bunch of different configuration options and most of them are set in our .env file. Ch the only thing that I'm going to focus on changing is this JWT underscore TDL, which is the time that the tokens are valid for uh, in minutes. By default, it's 60 or an hour. 
I'm going to change it to 24 hours. So if I go into my JDB file, I can add in JWT underscore TDL equals 1440. Save that. And the last step before getting started integrating this package with our API is that we need to generate the secret used during the encryption of these JWTs. And the JWT auth package provides an artisan command to easily do that. JWT secret. Now that that's all set, we can get started integrating this into our user model. In order to do that, let's open up our user.php file and we need to add in the JWT subject contract and allow it to be implemented by this user model. The only additional step is adding in a get JWT identifier method that returns the key and a get JWT custom claims that for now is just going to return a blank array. Our user is all set up to be authenticated. Now we need to have our API have a middleware that understands JWTs and can use them. So if we open up our config auth file, you'll see that we have two guards, a web and an API guard. The driver for the API guard currently is token. We just need to change that to JWT, save, exit. We can finally get started in building routes that will authenticate users through the JWT auth package. Now in my app, I already have methods for authenticating users coming from the web dashboard. I, I need a separate controller for authenticating users with the JDBT auth package. Let's get started by adding in our controller. And we're just going to have a single method called login. Now skipping back a little bit. On this config auth file, now we change the API driver to JWT. These are under guards. Now by default, the guard is web that's used on our auth middleware. If we had changed the default to API, it would easily allow us to use this entire application with JWT. Anything that's wrapped under the auth middleware would use JWT but I don't want that because I want to keep this web dashboard and also use this API. We need to be able to separate what controllers and what routes we want to be under the JWT auth and what routes we want to be under the traditional web auth, but be able to use Laravel's auth methods in both. And in order to do that, I'm going to show you a quick little workaround that'll allow us to do just that. So what we're going to do is, this main controller that's under app controllers, we're going to copy that and use it in our API namespace. And we are going to add a construct method that'll set the auth driver as API. So what this does is that any controller that extends this controller is going to use the JDBT authentication. So back on our login controller, we are going to use the controller that we modified. And on our login function, and on our login function, we're going to grab the user's credentials. We only want the email and password. We're going to use that to generate, hopefully, a token using auth attempt, and then return that token. Now let's open up Postman, and let's see what happens when we post to the login controller. 
our email and password. And look at that, we get a token back. Now I actually want this to be a JSON response So it just looks a little bit more tidier. Additionally, we want to add in an error method that will alert us if the user gave back the wrong credentials. Because right now, let's see what happens if we add in the wrong password. It just says token false. Not really that helpful. Comment that out and we'll do All right, that way if the token doesn't get generated, we'll return a response that just says incorrect email and password with the correct 401 header that can be used to catch errors on our client side. But if we provide the correct email and password, we get our token. Let's use this token to get posts that are associated with the jane at email.com account. Let's open up our post controller. So first let's create a route We'll call it post self. And we'll create this method in our post controller. Uh, before we continue, we also have to use our modified API controller Okay, now that that's done, we need to grab the posts. And we can easily do that using the auth user method and using the relational model, grab their posts, and then we can return those. Now if we go back to Postman and we get these posts without adding in this token, let's see what happens first. It kicks back an error. Now the reason for this is that when we're using this auth user method here, if a token's not provided or a token's incorrect, it returns null. And so in order to combat that, we can implement a try catch method. So we'll try to get the user using auth user or fail, a method provided by the JDBT auth package. And if that doesn't occur, we'll catch this user not defined exception. And we'll just return a simple JSON response. All right, now let's see what happens when we send that request. We get a response that says an error has occurred. So let's log back in and get our token. We have our email address and correct password. We get our token here. We'll copy it. And then we want to get posts self get, go to authorization, bear token, paste, send, we get our posts. Okay, what else can we do with this? Um, let's create a method that creates a new post. And we'll get just what we need. which is the title and the content for our post. And we will create a new post after finding our user using this try catch method.
And so user posts create details. And we will return the post that it's created. So if we go back to Postman and we will add in title, this new post, content. Isn't this cool? And we're not passing the email and password. Oh, we forgot to tie this to a route. Open up our API PHP file and we'll post create. Okay, back to Postman. Post, create, post. We have our authorization token. We have our title and content. Send it. We get back the post, title, content, user ID, and ID. Now if we go back and we get post self, we see our post attached to our account. Now this try catch method that we're adding into each of these methods, it's definitely redundant. So we can actually uh, remove this and we will put it in the control that we created called off user. And what we'll do is return this user uh, from this method. So that way on any of these controllers that extend this API controller, we can call user as this off user. Now what happens when your token expires? It's no longer valid. Very easy with JWT off. If we add in a new route to our api.php file called refresh, We'll just use this standard, we'll just use the same login control that we had. And we're going to generate a new token using the auth refresh method. And we'll just return that as a JSON response the same as the method above. Now, what happens when we call this method? Let's find out. So in Postman, we will call API refresh, and we get a new token. When that refresh occurred, it has invalidated our current token. The token that we're using right now is no longer valid and should be replaced by this new one. Now let's see what happens if we call the same method using our expired token. The token has been blacklisted. We should be checking to make sure the token is authentic first, giving us the chance to return an error. And so let's add an A try catch method now. Okay, so now if we go back to Postman and we send for the refresh, we get this error, the token has been blacklisted JSON response, which is what we want with the correct 401 unauthorized status. Maybe a 422 might be better, but regardless, uh, that's about it. We have successfully authenticated and secured a Laravel API. We have learned how to create JWTs, use them in our API calls to associate a particular user 
with requests to the server and get back information associated with that user. And we have learned how to refresh tokens before their expiration date. If you have any questions at all about this or anything else related to Laravel or JWTs, please feel free to let me know in the comments, or you can find me on Twitter at a Thanks for watching.